Greetings, everyone. In today's video, we will be taking a look at one of the most anticipated characters so far, the Huang Lungi's Inquisitor herself, Yin Lin. Yin Lin is an electro rectifier user who utilizes a zip string puppet and a series of marks to shock her enemies into submission. Before we get into her kit, let's first go over one of its core aspects, her Chameleon Cipher Forte. In battle, dealing damage with her basic attack, Resonance Liberation and Intro Skill will apply a Sinner's Mark to target's hit, as well as generate a set amount of Judgment Points. When her Judgment Meter is full, activating her heavy attack will deal a massive amount of Electro damage to the surrounding foes, as well as converting their Sinner's Mark into a Punishment Mark. The Sinner's Mark expires as soon as Yinlin leaves the field. However, the Punishment Mark will remain active for 18 seconds, regardless of whether or not she is on the field. When any ally deals damage to an enemy mark by a punishment mark, it will trigger a judgment strike, dealing electro damage to all marked targets. Basic attacks, resonance skill, and resonance liberation will all generate a set amount of judgment points on hit. Her basic attack has four sequences and will inflict enemies with a sinner's mark on hit. Her base heavy attack and mid-air attack are fairly standard and have no intrinsic effects. Her dodge counter is also fairly standard, but while in execution mode, the dodge counter will trigger one electromagnetic blast on hit, dealing electro damage to all enemies marked with a sinner's mark. Her resonance skill magnetic roar deals electro damage to the locked on target and allows her to enter her execution mode. While in execution mode, Basic attacks and dodge counters will trigger an electromagnetic blast against all targets inflicted with a Sinner's Mark. After the Resonance skill is activated its variant form, Lightning Execution will become available and deals massive electro damage to the surrounding foes. Casting her Resonance skill will also trigger her first passive, Pain Immersion, which increases her crit rate by 15% for 5 seconds. While the second passive Deadly Focus, increases the damage dealt by Lightning Execution by 10%. In addition, her attack is increased by 10% for 4 seconds if the target hit was inflicted with a Sinner's Mark. While her Judgment Meter is full, activating the Heavy Attack will convert all Sinner's Mark into Punishment Marks, allowing her and her allies to chain Electro Damage to all marked targets on hit. Her Resonance Liberation Thundering Wrath deals AOE Electro Damage to all enemies within her effective range and inflict all enemies hit with a Sinner's Mark. Lastly, her intro skill Raging Storm is the sexiest high kick you'll ever see and deals Electro Damage to the locked on target, applying a Sinner's Mark on hit, and her outro skill Strategist grants a 20% Electro Damage Deepen and a 25% increase to Resonance Liberation Damage for the next Resonator to take the field. While the first part of her outro is only usable by other Electro units, the second part is fairly universal so long as the character's liberation can do damage. I tried to simplify things as much as I could, while retaining the useful components so hopefully this gave you a good understanding of her kit. With that little exposition out of the way, let's formulate a game plan. Most of Yinlin's damage will come from her Chameleon Cipher Forte to be specific, the Chain Lightning properties of the Punishment Marks. So in battle, we need to generate as many judgment points as possible to convert the Sinner Marks into Punishment Marks. The sources for Sinner's Marks are her basic attacks, intro skill, and her resonance liberation. As a sub-DPS Yinlin, your goal is simply to activate your Punishment Mark as soon as possible and peace out. With that in mind, here is the combo I recommend. Begin your rotation on your team-wide buffer. For now, that's either Verena or Baiji. Activate their buffs and outro swap to Yinlin. From here, use skill, skill, full rotation of her basic attacks. Heavy attack, echo skill, outro. Go ham on your main DPS. Repeat the rotation once your DPS window ends. This combo is very beginner friendly and can be used on any team she's in. In game modes like towers, you can use the same tech just cast your liberation at the very beginning. While Calcaro is in the team, you can really spice this up by swap canceling. This looks a lot harder than it actually is, 
All you have to keep in mind is that whenever Calcaro launches one of his heavy attacks, no matter what happens, he must finish the attack animation regardless of whether or not he is the character you're controlling. In his liberation, he'll do two forward swings into a dive attack and two jumping slices into judgment cuts. Whenever you see the forward swing animation, that's your cue to swap to Yinlin. Once his attack lands, swap back to him and continue attacking. When you see the jumping animation of the next move, swap out until his attack lands, then swap back to him for the last part of his combo. Do your basic attack to skill combo and swap cancel back to Yin Lin to build judgment. Swap canceling will not only increase your DPS, but it will also allow Yin Lin to gain judgment points much faster than a non-swap canceling Yin Lin. Since my guides are mostly geared towards free-to-play players, I won't linger too long on her wave bands. The most notable ones are two, three, and six. When it comes to weapons, her signature rectifier String Master is going to be her best in slot. The weapon has a nice crit rate substat making it very easy to build her and will further boost both on field and off field damage. Cosmic is your second best option and will offer good damage, reduce her maximum energy requirement slightly and can be obtained for free once you've reached Union level 45. The Battle Pass Augment is also a great choice with a nice crit rate substat a 15% boost to attack after liberation is triggered, but will require the battle pass. Jinjo Keeper is a serviceable option and can be obtained for free from the Ranger Supply Box, assuming you haven't used it already. Variation is a viable option for support yin, but if all you can muster is a three star, then Rectifier of Night and Rectifier of Voyager are going to be your best option. Just use it as a placeholder until you get lucky with a better option. For Echo Sets, Yinlin have two main options. For a main DPS Yinlin, I recommend the Void Thunder set with Tempest Mephis, or Thundering Mephis as your main Echo. The two piece will increase her electro damage by 10%, and the five piece will increase the electro damage dealt by up to 30% for 15 seconds after a heavy attack, or Resonance skill is cast. Tempest Mephis will increase the current character's electro damage and heavy attack damage by 12% on hit, while the Thundering Mephis increases the current character's electro and resonance liberation damage by 12% for 15 seconds. Thundering Mephis does have a longer cast time, but either of them is a solid option for DPS Yin Lin. For main stats, you're looking for crit rate or crit damage on your four costs, electro damage or attack on your three costs, and attack on your one cost. For substats, keep an eye out for crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, and resonance skill damage. For support Yinlin, we want the five-piece Moonlit Clouds with the Impermanence Heron as your main echo. This set will increase her energy recharge by 10% and provide a 22.5% damage buff for the next resonator to take the field after her outro skill is triggered. The Impermanence Heron will also boost her energy gain and provide a 15% damage boost to the next resonator to take the field after her outro skill is triggered. Your stats here are the same as the DPS option, but add energy region to the three cost echoes instead of attack. Remember to follow the 43311 rule if possible. When it comes to team comps, Yin Lin can be played in pretty much any team thanks to her off-field damage capabilities. However, there are some characters that stands out with her as a teammate. Our first option, and likely the strongest team comp in the game right now, consists of herself, Calcharo, and either Verena, or Beiji. In this comp, she'll play the role of a sub-DPS while Calcharo will be the main damage dealer. Of course, many of you will likely want to run her as the main DPS. In that situation, you can run her alone side. Sanhua, Tauchi, or Yuanwu for some insane off-field damage potential with Verena or Baiji as your third. So as you guys can see, Yinlin is a very simple yet versatile unit. Not only can she deal an insane amount of damage while she is off field, the very generic boost to resonance liberation damage makes her fairly universal. And with that, we conclude our Yinlin guide. Until we meet again, friends.